Hello and welcome to the Rewind Show, hashtag 154. Another Friday, another chat with uh, the manager at Baker Borough, and that is Brent Peters. I can only just see him because he's been uh, he's been rushing round like a blue horse, you know what, aren't you? You want me to raise my seat? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Your chin was on the bottom of the screen. Well, there you go. It's all go, Brent, isn't it? <laughs> Tell me about it. I've just had an horrendous blinking last hour. And I mean horrendous. So I'm putting everything back, you know, like, you know what it's like around here at the minute? It's like a building site. <laughs> Yeah, excuse, totally. excuse the punt because it is a building site because we're having a uh, little work done and the lads are on on the on the building they're, they're getting on with it now you know we've had a, a decent couple of days so uh yeah it's taking shape but the thing is there's there's irish fencing everywhere and, and uh, where i have to put the coach or we, we as you know we've had the coach out on the street so that it was blocking um the build the pad yeah. so that when we've got matches nobody's like you can't get out on the ground, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So today I've come to put the coach back in and there's been people parked, so it makes it very difficult. But I've got in, I've had to come in at an angle. So as I'm coming in normally, I just back it straight in. Back it straight in. But I can't back it straight in because there's piles of you, you know, uh, the previous contractors left all his Irish fencing here. So that's all stacked up. So I have to come in at an angle. And as I'm coming in at an angle, there's loads of Irish fencing still on the floor. And it's got like a bag of, uh, you know, them, uh, what are they, five-ton bags of blinking stone in it on, resting on top. So I've had to, I've had to like shuffle round and, and go round. And as I've hit it with my tyre, like one of the, one of the broken Irish fencing, the, the bars shot up when the tyres hit it, the back tyre, shot up and pierced the blinking fuel tank. So they're blinking diesel everywhere. So I've just, I'm absolutely, I've just had to put loads of sand down, blinking, covered in blinking diesel, stinking. I'm supposed to go to under 23 game over at Nelson straight after this uh, this show. But I think uh, I'm going to have to give that a wide berth and uh, jump in the bath. <laughs> I'm full of diesel. <laughs> yeah, full of diesel, yeah. So yeah, I've just had an horrendous uh, past hour. Yeah, anyway, it is but what it is. From, but apart from that, Brent, not too bad. What's been going on at the ranch? No, it's been busy. It's been, um, you, you know, there's always things going on. I mean, there might not be very little football since last Saturday. Well, there's been no football since last Saturday. But there's always plenty to do. Um, you know, we've been fighting... As you know, we should have had a game scheduled for Monday. But uh, well, this is what happens when people when when people see a bit of blue sky and 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 sunshine, they think they forget about that we've had the amount of rain that everybody's had, and you know the they don't realise, and um, you know it, it absolutely pelted down all weekend and pelted down on Monday. That put paid to our game on Monday. Then we had to try and get the pitch ready for uh, Wednesday, but it pelted down again on Tuesday and it pelted down again on Wednesday. So that put paid to, paid to our game on Wednesday. Um, yeah, and, and, and the only days that were reasonable, or supposed to be reasonable, were Thursday and Friday. Thursday weren't, weren't good. You know, it was supposed to be quite, quite dry, but there was still rain. But yeah. today's, been a decent, today's been a decent day. But to be honest... You know, with the amount, we're, we're, we're not on our own. It just winds me up when I see people like that clown from South Liverpool who put something up on, uh, who's a South Liverpool supporter, who put something up. I didn't really see it for a, for a, a few hours. But I know Gareth Wager had put a comment on. You know, you were obviously uh, mourning because we knocked him out at, uh, at the Edward Case Cup and he were going on about the pitch. That doesn't surprise me, your game's off. Well, I'm not being funny. You know, several other games have been off. You know, it's not just Bake Up Borough. You know, there's, 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 there's clubs in our area, like Corn, uh, Nelson, that are having to find other facilities to get their, all the fixtures in because of that many behind. I mean, we've two to get in, um, which we'll get in hopefully this week. But, you know, seriously, I've, I've just had to go out and order. Well, we've just had it delivered. Well, we haven't had it delivered because the van broke down. Uh, who was supposed to deliver in all this sand. Um, 
So one of my vans had to go down and get it. We just we just uh, I had forty bags of sand brought up, ready for uh, going on in certain areas of the pitch because mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's certain areas of the pitch that even even with the drying dates, it's, it's okay. But it's like you're on blamange. It's like there's something not right underneath, and we can't do anything about it now until we finish. So we need to get these two games in, and then. Uh, Assess, but there's some serious problem underneath with with with, with a, whether it's a broken drain or, or another couple of broken drains. I don't know, but the you know the pitch is good, but it's not good if you know what I mean. If you look at it and you walk on it, you think, "Look at I mean, these builders who are from Burnley, they think it's yeah. Oh, look at look at look at the grass on it. Plenty of grass on it. Look at it. Yeah, but to certain areas, when you go on, you actually it's, it's not you know you sink. And referees, that's what's the problem with referees. They won't play on it. You know, and they, some won't, some will. Well, we'll come so back we to have... that. We're going to come back to that because that's one of our talking points on the show about pictures and postponements and the way around it, maybe for future. It's what we talked about quite a lot. So we'll come back to that one. But we'll start with the, the uh, dogged display away last week at Aston Athletic. We had a disappointing kind of Easter period by our uh, our standards. But last weekend, the lads really put in a good display for the majority of that game with 10 men. Yeah, it, were, uh, it, it felt like a win at the end. You know, you know, it were it, 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 it were really good because it were against all odds with what we kind of what happened. I mean, going back to before we talk about the, uh, you know, the Ashton Athletic game, you know, previous games, one or two previous games before that, we hadn't we hadn't been at our best. But but when I say that we haven't been at our best, so I think we've touched it on on the shows before. You know, sometimes the team can play reasonably okay, or reasonably well. But if you've got individuals in your team that kind of make wrong decisions, and from them wrong decisions, you get punished. Now. I said this on the show last week, and you only have to look at the Liverpool Manchester United game last Sunday. Yeah. To fully endorse what I'm saying. Yeah. Where a young, a young, relevantly inexperienced Liverpool player makes an horrendous punking square ball across the pitch, right into the path of an enders, and put United straight back in the in the game. Yeah. You know, and that and that that kind of turned the game, because um, and that's what happens. You know, an an experienced player probably wouldn't have done that. No, but he's a relevantly inexperienced player, made the wrong decision, and Manchester United get back in the game through it. Now that's what I'm saying. But you can't turn round and people can't turn round and say like to Liverpool because they have ended up dropping points against Manchester United. Oh, we're bloody terrible. We're not. We're this. We're that. We're that. We're we're highest paid players team in the league, and we're doing this and we're doing that. You know, and we should be doing this and should be. Stand on. You've just seen what's happened. You know, Jurgen Klopp will be as frustrated as Brent Peters is when he's watching uh, Bake Up Borough versus Blinking, you know, South Liverpool, and sees sees what happens and what unfolds. So it, it happens at the top level, and that's what what my point. What I'm trying to make here is. I said it last week on the show with us, you know, some of the performances, what's happened is certain individuals have, have, have kind of made wrong errors, wrong decisions. We've got punished from, from them decisions. Um, top of the table, or should I say two of the, the, not top of the table, but two of the giants of, of uh, world football go head to head on Sunday, Manchester United and Liverpool, and straight away, you know, um, Liverpool have got the ascendancy, eh? and and one of the younger, inexperienced players makes a decision, wrong decision. Lex Hernandez in, and it's and United straight back in the game. That's yeah. the five margins. That's so exactly what happened. that's exactly what happened. So so you know, yeah, some of the other results just recently leading up to the Ashton. Athletic game haven't been uh, haven't haven't been the best. The result wise, they've been they, they haven't been good. But again, and I think I brought it up on the on the previous show. 
you know, there's reasons. Sometimes there's reasons behind that about fluency and 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 you, you know, like where, where you, you you're not getting. It's like now where we've had games called off, you know, and then and then when when we finish the season, there's like a gap before we play the cup final. You know, there's no football. Well, we, that's been the story of our back end of our season since Christmas. Not because games have been getting called off. If you think about it, before the Southport game, we didn't have a fixture for two and a half weeks. No. And then we have to go into the Southport game. Well, it's not ideal. And 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 you couldn't. We tried to arrange friendlies to keep the lads ticking over, but everybody's playing. You know, majority of players, people are playing. So you go to your, you go to your football league clubs. Like I went to Burnley, and and thought, you know, like sometimes they are desperate for games with their under twenty threes, and uh, but even they couldn't accommodate us. So it, 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 it's. Kind of, we go into the Southport game, and we're we're kind of um, oh, yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah, we 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 we're not right. And then we we played after the Southport game. I don't, I don't, I don't think I think we played one league game, and then again we weren't playing. We didn't play for another couple yeah. of weeks. So it's been it's kind of we've been we've there's been no stop, fluency. Stop, stop start and it all season. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been difficult. But like we went into the into the Ashton. Athletic game on on Saturday. Uh, again, like I've I've tried to, I think it, 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 listen, it's very very difficult. We've got everybody, 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 you know, that's in the squad uh, and who's eligible will all want to play in the, in the in the in the cup final. It goes without saying. But, but sadly, I can't play everybody. It's just, just an, you know, I don't make the rules. You know, I've got to, I've got to pick what I consider to be the the, the best team. You know, to go out and hopefully lift the cup. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's going to be some disappointing players along the way, which I, I get that hundred percent. I get, but the difficult, the difficulty is, you know, players, player. I have to give players a chance to at least stake a claim. Mm. You know, and and that's why in the because we've we've now, you know, we've no chance of any playoffs, we've no chance of promotion. This has given me a chance to kind of, you know, change the team team around and give people who's been out injured, like you know, like for instance, you, you know, like Brad Hancock, and you know, we'll mention Brad Hancock on on this because Brad's been out injured, um, and. He's coming back, and and because of the game situation, we're not training. It, it's always the same at this time of year. You don't train with the in, the same intensity at this time of the year than what you do at the start of a season and building up for a season. You know, it's now getting to the back end of the season, and and games are coming. As you can tell, games come thick and fast in reality because they're trying to cram games in because of the because of the the, the season deadlines. So. So consequently, it's more about recovery than preparation. You know, it's about recovery, ready for your next game. So in terms of some players like Brad Hancock, you know, you're not doing much training. So basically, you know, and the under 23s haven't been playing. So, you know, how's he getting his game time? How's he going to build his fitness levels up? Without, yeah, he'll, he'll have one-to-ones with Brian Russell. Um, he'll go to the gym and do his stuff at the gym. But obviously, he needs he needs to be in a game, a game scenario or game situation. And my point here is, is this, is that I could, as a, as a manager, because I've got plenty of players, I could, you know, kind of think, dismiss him if you will, and think, well, you know, he's not up to speed yet, so he's no good for me. But that's not what I'm about. You know, I'm trying to help the lad the best I can to be part of of the first team at the minute, you know, to, to try and at least help him to get up to speed and get fit. That doesn't mean to say he's going to be in the cup final team it doesn't mean to say it don't mean to say anything but the way i look at this is this is is that when you i can't look through a crystal ball so what is there three nearly four there's four weeks to go to the cup final so if there's four weeks to go a lot of things can happen in them four weeks and 
when I say a lot of things could happen, remember these aren't full-time professionals, the oh. working lads. So things can go wrong in their in their working environment where they pick an injury up at work. I'm not saying you know, I'm just yeah. you, you've got to think like this. Where they're picking an injury up at work, which is which could pose a problem, right? You've got a situation where somebody could go down ill, sick. You know, which could pose a problem. Now, if these things happen, and you've got play, and 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 there's certain players in your camp that they've they've they've, they've got to be eligible to play in the final, right? They can't you can't just play them. They've got to have had so many games in to be able to play. You know, to be able to play in the final. So what I'm trying to say is, is this is that. From my point of view, when you've got people like Toby Wright and you've got to- and you've got people like Brad Hancock that really haven't played a lot of football this season because they've been in and out with injuries, right? But the quality players on the day and the and the relevantly experienced, you know, in this these type of games in this situation because they've been there before and had the t-shirt. Yeah. So I need to make sure in the eventuality that there are a problem, that they are up to speed, that I can then call on them. Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Massive. Yeah, of course it does. Massively. So, 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 and, as you, and as you said, with these two players, you know, Toby Wright and Brad Hancock, when they do play, they're massively effective for us. Well, that's right. So it's my job. Now, to get them in, even though they're not where they should be, but to get them in, people have to sit out. Yeah. It's, it's, it, that's how it is. It's not, so, rocket, not rocket science, is it? Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. And, and so, yeah. so basically, what I'm trying to do is, 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 is kind of be as, as fair as I can. And then, and then when it does come to the cup final and it does come to selecting the team and it does come to selecting the bench, People can't turn around to me and say, well, you haven't been really fair with me because I've not been ab- able to have uh, much game time or I haven't done this. You, you know, you haven't been... So they can't say that because I've, I've gone out my way to be as fair everyone's as I can. An, everyone's on an even footing then. Correct. I mean, for instance, I had a earmark for one player in particular uh, this last week, as it happens, the games were called off. End of the Ashton Athletic uh, Ashton Athletic game. He comes up to me. He said, "Oh, I'm away now for the rest of the week." What do you mean? Oh, I'm away. Uh, I, I, I'm a school teacher. We're on holiday from school. Uh, my missus is pregnant, so it's the only time really we can go away. So I'm not available. So had we have played these two games, this player I'm talking about, one of, now I'm not being funny. You're playing at you're playing at semi pro level, yeah. right? You know what the season starts. You know what the season finishes. You know you're in important games. So how can you how can you book time away, right? When you're playing at this level, right? During the season, miss games and then expect to be selected. Well, you can't or you shouldn't expect that. Correct. And and the player I'm I'm actually talking about as well which absolutely infuriated me on Saturday because I found out about it, right? And I, I might as well talk, tell you this one while, while we're on, right? We had a situation on Saturday. We didn't have a situation on Saturday at all where, where we took a player to one side to have a chat with him about the way we were going to play against Ashton Athletic. All this player said to us at the time... Uh, before I have a word with you and, and your coach, so me, Nigel and Alan, we're going, to, we're going to sit with him and just have a word with him about a couple of things, this player in, in particular, this player I'm talking about. And what happened where he just said to me, my, my, my tummy don't feel right good. I need to, can I just go to the toilet first, which is common. That can happen any time. People have a big disruptive stomach or whatever. So we said, yeah, 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 no problem. You, you know, just go to the toilet and then we'll, we'll deal with you. So he goes to the toilet. And then when he comes back from the toilet, we go and sit in the stand with him. And first question that's said to him, and we're dealing with adults here. You know, they're not, this isn't like under eights football. This is adults. 
are you all right? Do you, you know, do you, and say, yeah, you know, my stomach's just a bit uneasy. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'm all right. So if a player says to you, he's all right, he's all right, his stomach's a bit uneasy. I actually said to the player in question as well, do you want me to go and get you some peppermint, you know, peppermint soda, a bit of brandy yeah. to settle? My mum mom used to have that, and it worked. Yeah, it, it does work. Yeah, exactly. Or do you want me to go and get you some, uh, you know, some uh, brandy and port that'll yeah. just set, settle your stomach? No, I'm, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. So the player tells us he's okay, right? We're dealing with adults. So the player plays in the game, as you know, what, what, what unfolded in the yeah. game. Uh, in the second half, the player had to leave the pitch because he, 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 he you know, he, um, he ran a book in. He was a bit frustrated about one or two things, and 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 and, and, and he obviously he was feeling a bit uneasy, so he came off the pitch and we made the substitution. So the game's going like it is, and apparently this is what supposedly had been said. So all the fans from Bake Up, and I call these genuine supporters, right? The guy who's shouting is not a genuine Bakeup supporter. He's here to follow his lad, right? And his lad weren't the player in question who's, who we're just talking about, by the way. So all of a sudden, all the fans must have been saying, listen, if we lose this game now, if we lose this game, um, you know, nobody yeah. can be blamed, can we? They've all put a shift in. It's been a great game to watch. You know, exactly. fair, fair credit to them. And this blinking gobshite, has freaking turned round and freaking said to said uh, to everybody, ah, there's only one man to blame if we lose this game, and that's the bleeding manager for playing for, for playing sick players. Well, I'm thinking, what you know, you know what I mean. Everybody's on a high, done so well, and this blinking clown comes out with a statement like that. Now, I'm not being funny. Nobody played a sick player. The player threw his hat in the ring and said he was fit. So if well, he's that, fit, he's fit. That to me, though, you know, I, that's the first time I've heard that story. But I mean, that to me, Brent, those tells me that this one person's got an agenda. Correct. Uh, Correct. Because looking at the balance of the game, the lads have put a fantastic display. That kind of comment don't even have to come into in, into the into the mix. No, it's obvious because obviously. His lads not in the starting line or hasn't which been in. The, the, which is the agenda. Which is the agenda. But but sometimes you've got to take your blinkers off and look why the lad is not in the starting lineup. You know it doesn't. He, you know the 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 his lad in question. Let's be honest, right? Was actually in the squad to play in the in to, in, in the um, the semi final. Unfortunately, he had to pull out because he because he was ill. Right, so yeah. it's unfortunate if you have to if you have to pull out and you can't and and somebody takes your spot and they do okay, then why am I taking the spot away from them? That's how we work here. Yeah. You can't, you know, you can't turn around. And I've had this out with players before. If a player says to me, "I'm not available Saturday, Brent, but I'm available Wednesday," I'd be saying to that player, "Well, that's fine. I get what you're saying, yeah. but if you're not available Saturday, the player I put in." In, in place of you on Saturday, if he does the business, then I'm sorry, he'll be in on Wednesday, whether you're available or not. Well, if, you go through, you, if you're running a football club where you've got favourites and you're having conversations behind players' backs, it, your, 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 your club will be absolute turmoil. Correct. You can't, you don't, you don't, it's not like I and said. Your, it's not your, and your word won't be worth shit. Exactly. It's, it's not under blinking, it's not under 10 football and under 8 football, it's blinking real deal, you know, and I've got a, I've got a squad of excellent footballers, all of different characteristics, yeah. I don't have favourites, I think I'm quite well, I'm fair and equal, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to come on, on here and say what I've had to endure the, 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 in the last few few days, but believe you me, Players don't know what one half, you know, what goes on behind the scenes no. because, because there's, you know, you know, players are, listen, players can be selfish because they're all about the self. And I get it, I get it, I understand that. But you're in a team environment. And if you've got really good players, you know, you've got to try and, it's better to have all that, a, 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 a team full of balanced, good players. Yeah, the unity than, has got to be there. 
the, the, with all the unity and they're all playing together than than having to leave uh, one player out because he doesn't because he doesn't get on with another player. Yeah. Well, I remember you know, this has just popped in my mind. Well, just just mention it. I'm just going off at a tangent for a, for about twenty seconds. I remember when I first came working for you. I think it was 2019, 2020. And your player of the season, the player of the season, was a bloody substitute for 99% of the games. And that was Alex Luby. Was and you right. gave it to him because of his attitude and application. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, my player of the year doesn't necessarily have to be the star of the show. No. It's the all-round package. Because that the guys with... behind you are the star of the show because you need them more than anything. Well, I can remember back in I don't know what when it were going back to Rosendale United days when I were when I were uh, a member of the management team, although I were reserve team manager at the time. Um, they had they had two star players playing at, uh, at, at Rosendale at the time. They had a, a, a lad called Paul Beck, and if you you, you know went yeah. on to play for Accrington Stanley, scored lots and lots of goals, and did a did a lad called Jimmy Clark. And Jimmy Clark scored lots and lots and lots of goals, but it were a well-known fact, you know, the 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 kind of clash they they, they couldn't play together because because it were all ego. It were about egos. Yeah, yeah. And 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 it couldn't happen, you know. And 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 it ended up because there were a majority of local local players playing at Rosnell at the time, and there and 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 because one of the you know Jimmy Clark were a local lad. They kind of sided with with Jimmy Clark, um, and and kind of Paul Beck got a little bit isolated. And and it worked creates, like that. that creates a bad energy. It, it, exactly. But then what happened was Jimmy Clark ended up moving on, and then when the and, and when there were no Jimmy Clark there at all, and Paul Beck were there, the lads realised that Paul Beck Paul Beck wasn't the gobshite that 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 that, that were being made out. He were all right. He were a good lad. But if I Paul Beck, I'd be wanting to do one anyway. Correct, yeah, exactly. Because you've got, you got a dressing room full of backstabbers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, one of them would be our, my mate, our mate, if he's listening. Because he was at Rosendale at the time. Mr. Simon Holden. He will. He's, been, uh, he's probably got a <laughs> San Miguel in his hand. Sure. Probably has. He'll be on his balcony now, he's spared. <laughs> Wiping all the dust down. I got an essay yesterday coming out to Manchester. He wrote phone to me. He said, it's a dusty place here. <laughs> <laughs> has he got, has he sure he's got the flight? To, uh, is he not in Sahara Desert? <laughs> he said, there's loads of dust around here. It's a dusty place. Yeah, no. I'm only, I'm only winding up, Simon. I'm only winding up. Don't, don't take it to heart, mate. Uh, I'm only winding that, up. No, that, but seriously. You know, what you're saying is, is spot on because, you know, players can be like you say, very selfish and, and, and fickle. Exactly. You, you know, but, but from a managerial point of view... How do you, how do you balance that? Why, why would you want Paul Beck on the bench and play Jimmy Clark, right, if your team is better with them both in? Well, exactly. <laughs> you know... Do you know what I'm saying? But that's where the managers, that's where you earn your corn in the kind of trying to put something together where they can both complement each other in the same team. And then the team and the club benefits from them two players being in the same lineup. Well, I think so. I think so. I mean, it, it's a well known fact, weren't it, at Manchester United back in, in Fergie's days that uh, were it, were it Teddy Sheringham didn't get on with. Dwight York, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Andy Cole, one of them, they didn't get on. But, but, but they had to play together for you were picking them. You have to play together. Exactly. You don't have to speak to them during game. You know what I'm saying? So right, you don't go out for a drink with them after that game. No, exactly. You know, so <laughs> these, things, these things happen. But, <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, I'm from, we're coming back to Bake Up Burris here, we're in a situation, and I think I've resolved it now, you know, everything, I've, I've, you know, I've had a good chat with, 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 with the people, uh, you know, and, and he, 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 he fully gets it, you know, he, he's bought into it, you know, and, but the frustrating yeah. part for, 
for me and Nigel and Alan and, and Ryan in a way is 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 in an ideal world before the cup final, even though I'll keep it a close guarded secret that but but potentially you know what, what roughly your, your your cup final side's gonna be and what you'd like to do, wouldn't you, is is just play without saying anything to anybody, just play that team what you're thinking as a yeah. collective, play them in a few games and just see how it how it all pans out and materialises. But we ain't but got the time, have we? Well we we haven't got the time, but equally, which is so frustrating at the minute, and I come back to discipline and indiscipline, is is the fact that we've got players suspended. You know, so they can't play them. And then we've got players that aren't suspended, but I don't play them because if they pick a yellow card up, they will be suspended. Yeah. So I can't play them. I mean, that's happening with, with Kyle at the minute. You know, I mean, as much as he's desperate and wants to play, and I've said to him, you know, L -l listen, Kyle, you, you, you know, go on then. I'll, I'll, I'll pick you. I ain't got a problem. I ain't got a problem, but I'll tell you now, I can't control a referee. No. And if a referee deems that something's gone on in a game where he thinks it's a yellow card, and he gives you a yellow card, you've nowhere to go. You're banned. That's it. <coughs> Excuse me. So you you better you know you better off sitting these games out. <coughs> because and of course you and of course you got others. Joey Fallon still got uh, a ban from the South Liverpool game. Yeah, he still got two with Ma Mason Mason's out, and then we've got Lewis North out, goalkeeper. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll go to that, Lewis North, because it is part of the Aston Athletic game. Gets his opportunity back in the side. Loses his compass. <laughs> and ends up on bowling, going for a pint of milk somewhere. Just uh, one, of them, uh, one of them things as a goalkeeper. Well, well, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to stick... Well, I didn't do it the week before with Mason. I'm not going to do it with Lewis. I'm not going to sit here and throw anybody no, under a buzz. Under a buzz. Listen, he, he, he's funny. got to learn from that. He's a young lad. He's coming. He's got potential. And I'll use that word as I'll use the word potential. Potential. His potential to be a very, very good goalkeeper. Um, Nigel has known him longer than me because, like Nigel's. You know, I like, had him, you know, growing up. Yeah. But, but, you know, I've seen him in the 23s be absolutely outstanding. But I've also seen him in the 23s be outstanding and then throw a blinking, a right one in. Yeah. You know, and, and then, and then don't forget, we played him, we, we, we played him against a, a strong Atherton Coleridge team in the Lancashire Challenge Cup and he never yeah. let us down. He did oh. well. Yeah. He, 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 he did well, so, you, you know, he's made a decision. I mean, whilst it's easy to point a finger in this instance at Lewis because he he, he kind of didn't know where his bearings were and he, he, he kind of didn't know whether to, the wind got it and he didn't know yeah. whether to twist the stick, he, he got his, his head were on. But whilst we, we, it's easy to, to point the finger at that point, and yeah, it were Lewis and it, nobody else, but I, and, and, and this is the kind of a bone of contention regularly with me. When, when, when our midfield players are running back, when the team's on the, on the attack and we are running back as a midfield group, right, and your back line stretched, your back line is stretched, I can never, and I, I, it's something I'm on to them all the time and, and I mentioned it, and I mentioned it at, on Saturday at half time to... Captain Michael Gervin. I firmly believe that the midfield players should break a goal, not just ambling back because the goal side of their marker. They should sprint to fill the gap. Yeah. So you've a solid gap. So you've a solid wall, not a solid gap, a solid wall. Yeah, you get you can, you can you can you can plug in front of him. And, Correct. And, and shield the ball back to the goalkeeper then. So what I'm saying is, if you go back and put your head back on that, how that broke and what were happening, in this instance, and it's not just this, it, I, I just happens to be in this instance, Michael Gervin were part of it, but it's happened with the other midfield players as well. 
he was running back and he was gold side of his man and he, it's kind of like, well, I'm gold side of my man, there's no danger, keeper's coming out, keeper's coming out, he'll deal with it and then we're going back up the pitch. You get me? That, that, that's the mindset. You get yeah. me? And I, I, can, I can understand it. But, but you know for a fact that midfield have got to cover defence. You've got to cover defence. So the last thing that you want is gaps. Now, I feel that if Michael would have continued his run and sprinted and stood in that gap where, where Lewis has come into, mm. that wouldn't have happened. Because no. Michael would have been in that gap. And Instead, Lewis, wouldn't, Lewis, Lewis wouldn't have had to come that far out. Correct. And, and I just think it all the time. The midfield players tend to stop short and don't. And I, and I don't know why they do this because if you think about a back a back line, it's like a brick wall, isn't it? You want it solid. Yeah. If you take a piece out of that wall, there's a gap. And if you're a, 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 any decent player, you'll attack that gap, that space. Yeah. So you want to fill that space. So if you're coming back towards your own goal, mm. right, and you and you sprint back. And, and, and we're stretched a bit, just drop onto the gap to fill the gap. Yeah. So at, at that point, you might have about, six players on your back line. Yeah. But more, it's, it's about make, just making sure the, the job's complete before you can, uh, you know, because he's like running alongside him thinking everything's okay. But it was quite clear that it weren't okay because... Well, it weren't okay because, it, because obviously what's happened is there's a gap. And Lewis has come into that gap to to deal with the ball in the gap, but he didn't know whether to blink and edit. I think he come to edit away, but then it, it caught caught in, in, wind, in, yeah, it wind, and then it was looping over his head, so he, he decided to handle it. It was just a mess, weren't it? Let's be fair. Yeah. It, 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 it you know, was. we can sit here and talk about it all 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 night, but it was a mess. One of them, he, he, he hands it, and then he he looks down at his feet. And realizes where he is. Hello. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do about it. But the beauty of that that happening, if there is a beauty, it galvanized the team. In my eyes. Well, it it it, it, it did, and uh, you know the lads, you know, to play for to fifty minutes roughly with ten men. Yeah. With, with ten men is one thing, but you you you. you you go. You, you haven't got your regular goalkeeper in. I mean, straight away, you know, we're like we're on the we're on the bench, and I went, I went Toby, Toby, because I see him in training going in sometimes. So I went Toby, yeah. and then there's a debate when we put Toby in, where there's a bit of a confusion. There's a debate in my left ear and a debate in my right ear. The left ear was, oh, uh, Malachi, Malachi, Malachi. He's supposed to be a top keeper. I'm thinking, well, Toby's gone in now. We'll readdress it at half time. Now, when half time come, I just turned around and said, "Listen, are you happy, Toby, to be in goal?" Or, or you know, people are telling me Malachi's. A, no, no, I'm happy to be. In, well, that's fine. Carry on. We didn't want to put Malachi in anyway, really, because it made no sense. Because obviously, he's a centre half. That yeah. would have meant, a, you know, that would have meant a lot of reorganising. Um, you know, so it's ideal to put Toby in. But you know what, thinking Toby were, did it really. Were, it was the right decision. Under six, right. under six Rochdale goalkeeper. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, you know what? For a big lad, that right at the end, the oh, last yeah. kick of the game, down to his right hand side. <laughs> you know, for a big lad to go down there, and uh, uh, you know he's do, he's done fantastic. Flying you know, cat, Peter Benetti. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely fantastic. His handling was superb. Everything was good. You know, everything was good about him. You know, it's, yeah. he. he so refreshing, isn't it? Because you know, although you, yeah, you, know, you don't need a reserve goalkeeper, you got two for price of one, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so no, but but going back, the lads, the lads did really, really well, and I thought there were some top performances, really good performances. Yeah. Uh, no more, no more, and I don't like usually like singling players out because. The, the lads, I mean, Ben Thompson worked his socks off as well. Ben yeah. Thompson worked his socks off. But, you know, for me, the player that, 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 that really, really, really stood out for me on, on, on the day in terms of digging in and, you know, getting into situations and last minute linking intersections yeah. was uh, Ryan Siddle. You know, I thought Ryan were... Absolutely were, were, spot on there, Brent. 
Yeah, I thought he were I thought he were class on the day. You know, his energy, his work rate, and like I said, the, you know, his determination. You know, he he just epitomises what we know he is. He's a winner, and and he you know he he did he did fantastic. He, he, you know, but doesn't he, it did, doesn't it not make it so easy or easier as a manager when you've got players that kind of you've said it before as managers. You know, any manager will be the same. A player can reflect the manager. You know, you've said that with Callum Hewitt, you said he reflects you. And probably Ryan, when he don't get involved in all the, the noise which goes on, he's exactly the, the same kind of player. Yeah, you, you know, it's funny because I've been having a conversation with the builders here. They, they, they both are, are football guys uh, from over Burnley. And the, you, you know, and uh, we're having them conversations. We were talking about a player you'll know very well, Gary Stockforth, because they know yeah. Gary Stockforth. You know, excellent player, and you know, he's, and, he's and your it, kind of player you tried to sign. Exactly, that's what I said to him. He's hundred percent my kind of player because he's, you know, they said he's, you know, he's he's, he's kind of no wish for a nicer player off the pitch, but on the pitch he's a blinking nasty so and so. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, fair, he's nasty, you know, he's but a he's a winner. You know, and I, and I kind of put Ryan and, 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 and Callum in that category. You know, the winners, you know, they want to win. You know, Ryan's, you know, Ryan's, you know, I'm a, you know what, what, what's happened with Ryan, you know, in, in terms of it's well-known fact. He can't do the other side of things. And, 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 and obviously, to be fair to him, he's, he's, he's curbed that. You know, he has curbed that. And long may that continue, you know. He, 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 but... In that game, well, in the last few games he's played, he's he's excelled. But in that game, you know, in particular, I thought he was, uh, you know, I thought Ben Thompson absolutely, you know, came a, a second best to him, you know. But 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 it, it's just a shame about Ben at the minute because, you know, he had he had how many chances did Ben have to score on Saturday? Well, there were one clear one which he got himself in just on left hand side and. Really should have been drilling it from there, but you know he, he offers so much, but just lacks uh, lack, lacks goals. Well, the midfield area, you know, I've said it. You, you know, listen, I'm not giving. Any, I've got, I've got a few games. I've got two more game, three more games to have a look at things, and then obviously we'll we'll carry on. We'll be training, and and and, and probably might get a game. Hopefully, behind closed doors with we. We may be a, a football league team. We'll see, you know, leading up to the up to the final. I mean, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because it's all right playing games, but you don't want to pick injuries up. Yeah. Um, but equally, you, you you need you need to have that if you can have it. But but I've got you know, there's a lot of things that I've got to look at and take into consideration before I name the squad and the and 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 the the cup final team. But one thing that is really, and it's not the first time I've said it on this show. And uh, 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 what concerns me is this: as the team, every department should be chipping in with goals. Now, if we look at Saturday, you know the defence has chipped in. Scott's done brilliant again. Scott, you know Scott Johnson's come in and he scored a yeah. uh, you know a vital goal for us. You know and and done, and you know took his goal well. There was a game uh, on Bake Up where I uh, can't remember who just where which one it were now just just recently Dar Darwin he scored against yeah Darwin, Darwin. yeah and so then he scored, scored and then he scored up at Olka yeah so so you look at you look at it you know the departments and you think you know when you look at your back four where are they contributing goals are they contributing goals whatever you know over over the season and then you look at your midfield. And you think, well, who's contributing goals in midfield? You know, because if we look back on over the season and on the midfield, it's been it's been absolutely poor. Yeah. You know, there's been no return coming from the midfield in, in goals. I think the last time the midfield player scored um, were Malachi Clark against uh, Sambach. Yeah. I might be wrong. He got, he got two. He got two. I might be wrong. I could be, but, but, but I have no facts in front of me, but... I think that is the last time a midfield player scored. Mm. Um, you know, so 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 that's kind of a uh, a kind of a worry because we're not scoring enough goals from midfield. And then you look up front, 
and you look at the players that's picked the baton up this season and ran with it, you know, the, in the main, it's been it's been Lewis and Kyle, yeah. you know, and you and you and you wish that you know like um, Alex had chip in more. We, we we he's had opportunities and he'd chip in more, and obviously Jack's come off the bench, so his game time has been limited, but he has scored, but to say he's come off the bench. But, you know, these are things I've got to look at because when I pick that team, you know, the cup final side, we've got to, we've got to win that game. You know, there's no two ways this puts a maybe is we've got to win it. So whilst you want, you, you, you know, you've got to look at every department. And if I, you know, it could be that somebody, a midfield player might have to sit out the game because, I, 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 you know, I don't, he's not scoring enough goals. He's not coming up with the goods. And, and, and equally, because if they misfire, you've got to look at it this way. If the strikers on the day are misfiring for whatever reason, you've got to look somewhere else on your pitch to, 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 to fire. You know, so, you, you know, from a managerial point of view, I've got to have the more people I've got on that pitch that can, that, that can uh, pull the trigger and, and is more likely to score goals, then they're more likely to be in the team and play. And, yeah. and 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 kind of that's how I've got to look at things. I, I can't have favourites. I can't as much as a, I, I, I love, uh, you know, we've just talked about it, Callum, and as much as, a, you know, we've talked about Ryan, and as much as we've talked about, you know, the captain, Michael Gervin, and as much as we're talking about Ben Thompson, I'm just going off these, as much as we're talking about them, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to be, pick it, you know, the team on the day, you've got to think, well, how many goals has Michael Gervin scored this season in open play? How many goals has Callum Hewitt scored this season in open play? How many goals has Ryan scored this season in open play? How many goals has Ben Thompson scored in open play? You know, and these are things that I've got, I will consider when I'm, when I come to pick my team. Yeah. You know, these, these, these are, these are things I've got to, I've got to think about, you know, and, and, and it's the same with it, with it, with it, with it, with it, you know the striking position. You, you know, you've got to look at think. Well, you know, you go with the people who's on form and who's banging the goals in. You know, it's simple. It's not. It's not. It's not about favourites, not favourites. It's about. It's about what's presented before you and what's been happening. Because let's be honest, the cup game isn't over blinking. You, you know, forty. Uh, you know, forty league games, thirty odd league games, or whatever. It's it's over one match. So you've got to make sure you've got the you've got the balance right, and you're playing, and and you and you can and you can score the goals if you, if you get the chances. Yeah. I mean, let's be fair. You know, you saw those who watched the Man City Real Madrid game. If that were ever a, if that was ever a showcase to to get your strikes off, to get your strikes off, that that proved it. Yeah, because there were goals in that game where they blanking out. Where did that come from? I mean, for. Foden's blinking goal were terrific. It were a bit like the, the midfielder for United, that the young kid for United. Terrific, but, but the shooting, they're having a go. You know, we've got players that'll take one touch too many and the, and the opportunity's gone. Yeah, they get themselves into some fantastic positions, but then they get a bit shot shy. Yeah, yeah, and it's gone. The opportunity's gone. But it's, so, all about, it's all about confidence, though, isn't it? isn't it, as well? You know, having having the confidence of when you do get a chance, just just go for it. No one's gonna have a no one's gonna have a go at you. Probably more people are gonna have a go at you for not having a having a crack. Well, that's right. You know, listen, it, 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 it's all in their hands. It's all nothing set in stone. You know, I've got the team sheets in front of me. I've got all the fact. You know, the you, you know the under twenty threes are playing over there tonight. Gareth Wages. You know, uh, playing for him because he wants he wants game time. He's desperate to play in this final. You know, yeah. like everybody else is. So yeah. he's, he's he's having to go and play in the twenty threes. You know, and that's just it is what it is. You know, at the end of the day. But you know, this is this is it, it, it's a one game and it's a one game. We've got to we've got to win. Now, you know, as much as again, we've got plenty of time before, but. Between now and the games we've got to play, uh, play like Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, there'll be changes in every one of them games because I've got to give people opportunities to see what they can do and where, where they're up to. Got some messages coming on Instagram. Got Jack Reed who said, 
Uh, Brent, can you wish my cousin, Blake, happy birthday, please? He's 14 today. Happy birthday, Blake. <laughs> uh, hope you've had a great day. There you go. So, yeah, some uh, quite a few people uh, tuned in on the socials tonight. Brent, I want to touch upon what we spoke about at the start regarding... Uh, you know, the postponements of games, a lot of clubs being rained off, they're having to find alternative facilities. Uh, I know it's something you've spoke about in the past, but what's your take on it in regards to this season? It's the same every season. It, won't, it, it doesn't change. Don't forget, we, we've, we've been in the same situation as Corn have been in uh, this season. Um, it's all about it's all about a situation that no clubs can control, and that's the weather. You know, it's it's there's no surprise that games. If you look at as it happened, we played on Saturday because we're, we we were at Ashton, you know. But all the teams that around our area all were off. Nelson were off. I think I think I'm right in saying Nelson were off on on Saturday. Cobb was off on Saturday. Barry Rosewick were off on. So if you, if you if you watch, it's a trend. All them teams are off because this side, of, this this area, you know, we've been, you know, we've had a battering of, of bad weather. You know, it's just the way it is. You know, nobody can control the weather, and the FA, and it's not the league. Before everybody starts going on about the Northwest Counties League, because I see it on social media. Yeah, it's not the league. They have to adhere to. The, the, the FA and the reason why this is a, 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 um, a deadline and people say I don't understand why we've got to finish at this time and there's still plenty of time to go well it's quite simply why you've got to finish to start where you've got a league you've got a league that uh, uh, operate on playoffs so then playoffs have got to be completed right by a certain date because why that's got to be completed because that will dictate uh, the final tables of promotion and relegation, right? Promotion and relegation. The FA have only got a short window where, and don't forget, they're dealing, they're not just dealing blinkered and dealing with the Northwest Counties League, right? One league. They're dealing with all the leagues all over the country. So when you talk about step six, where we're break up are competing at step six, the step six leagues all over the country. It's yeah. not just about Bake Up Bury, it's a pyramid. Right? It's a pyramid. It's not, 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 not just should I say Northwest Counties, it's a pyramid. Right? So when you, you turn around and talk about, you know, who's who's going up, it all goes through the pyramid all across the country at step six. So everybody has got to finish on time, basically, because when the end of the season comes in. The leagues then have got to, or should I say the FA, have got to then decide do you get clubs that will drop out completely. We can't afford to be in that league anymore. We're dropping out. So then there's, and then they'll have to look at lateral movements who can, to make it, you know, teams, some teams might not want to play, you know, at Northwest Counties League. Like, let's say, for instance, Root Ron Rovers might not want to play in the, in the Northwest Counties League. They might want to play more in the uh, Northern East. Eastern Counties League, yeah. like Tidecaster or anybody like that, are over that side. Yeah, Yorkshire way. So, so all these things have then got to be put into into place, right? The FA have got to formulate the the leagues for the new season on promotion and relegation. So they've only got a short window to do that, right? So everybody's got to finish basically on time, right? And then and then it, it all gets put into place. Now then. My argument is, this is my argument, you can't control the weather. And unless everybody's got a 3G pitch and I'm playing on a 3G pitch, it will work because you won't be affected by the weather, 
right? Unless it's obviously ice, you know, you will be affected if there's ice on it. But other than that, in the main, you'll get through your fixtures on a 3G surface, but not everybody's got a 3G, 3G surface. You know, probably if you spoke to, you know, the FA behind closed doors, they'd probably want everybody because it works for them, yeah. you know, to have the 3G surface because you get through the, league, the seasons, no problem, right? But some leagues won't even, we had this conversation the other day, some leagues don't even acknowledge a 3G. You, no. They won't acknowledge when people say about, oh, Brent don't want a 3G on Baker. No, but I'd have an hybrid. Uh, yeah. I'd have a, you, you know what I mean? Which is I'd the have, same as like Arrogate Town. Yeah, which is which is grass and fibre. Yeah. You know, it's not 100% fibre, right? There's a difference. Now, what I'm saying is, unless everybody's got them pictures, you know, you, you, you're dealing with something you can't, nobody can predict. You're dealing with weather. And the reason why pictures are, are to, have taken an hammering, and when you look at Gig Lane, took an hammering, right? Because, because they probably played on that pitch when it hasn't been fit to play on properly, and it ruins the pitch yeah. because of the weather, right? If you look at Corn's pitch, it's absolutely horrendous, right? You look at that pitch, again, it's because of where they are and because they've had a battering with the weather. And obviously, mm -hmm. more than one team's probably played on that pitch. Right, yeah. you look at Baron Oswick's pitch again, it's had a battering by the weather, right? So the pitch is knackered. Our pitch, you know, you look at it, you come here. It's I looked at Withan Charles' pitch yesterday, right? When I were at that meeting yesterday, and I look at come back and look at our pitch, stood on the sideline, and our pitch 100 times seriously, not being this is 100 times better than Withan Charles. Boy, grass on it, you know, it's, it's perfect. But we've got a couple of bad areas on this pitch where. Yeah whereby that has been created by the level of water that's, that, that, that's, whether it's underneath the surface and the drains can't take it, right? And there's been amount, that amount of rainfall. It, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. It's horrendous. I'm not, I'm not a grounds person as such, and I'm not, I'm not an horticultural guy, but it doesn't take a pea brain to understand that's why they don't, you know, you get to a situation, it's even now, we've had a dry day today, but if we were playing on that pitch today, we wouldn't play for one area, just one area, that's all. We would not play on that pitch because referees will say it's a bit dangerous that because your foot is it's like jelly. It's like jelly, but it's had that battering of water and water and water. So the issue becomes, no matter how much you spend on your pictures or whatever, the problem that comes is... You, you, you're facing the elements all the time. Now, if you look at this time last season, in Bake Up Burroughs case, right, if you remember, we were behind with our fixtures because yeah. of the way that, that the game. And we ended up playing, in the last week of the season, we ended up playing, I think it was Monday we played Chatterton, yeah. uh, uh, and then on the, when, on the Wednesday, Wednesday we played Pilkington, and they were both challenging for the league, yeah. right? And then we had two more games after that. And then we take more the games. Day, game. Yeah, but but there's no movement. There's nowhere to go now. The issue you've got. This is the issue you've got, because the because the rainfall and the weather has been has been that bad. Pictures are becoming damaged, seriously damaged. Like the so when they when they're damaged, they need remedial repair. So you've only got a short window to get that repair work done before you before you, you know you're starting to play again. So it's just a sm short window. So, and, and then you're reliant upon, you know, like, like us, we, we, we don't do all the big work that needs doing on Baker. We get an outside contractor in that does all our major remedial work. So then you're tied up to when he's available to be able to come because the guy that we've had for, you know, the, probably the last uh, 20 years, right, does a lot of the football league pitches, uh, uh, you know. So his priority is the football league clubs before he'll come and come and do our pitch, and then he'll come and do our pitch and drop on our pitch. So my point is, it's all right. The league saying we'll start earlier, we'll to get to 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 to, fit, to stop what's happened this season. We'll start earlier. So instead of finish starting at the end of July, we'll start in the middle of July or at the beginning of July. But the trouble is with that, if you finish now at end of April, beginning of May, right, and you're starting again in the middle of uh, the beginning of July, 
right? Your pitch isn't going to your pitch isn't going to last because it, it needs recovery time. Yeah. It needs the remedial work and then leaving to recover. If you don't recover, if it doesn't recover, you 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 undoing all that good work and then you're back to square one. So so you're asking me what the answer is. The an, the answer is global warming has changed everything. So global warming's changed everything. So my my answer is. And I, and I actually seen Walshaw Football Club. If you look at one of the, go down their tweets, and they, they actually put this, and 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 it's something I've said before. They said the FA should. You're never going to change global warming now. It is what it is, right? The seasons have gone, so the FA need to grow a pair, right? And what they should do is change the seasons and 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 change the seasons round, right? Now I wouldn't be against that. Right, I wouldn't be against that, but to do it and do it properly, you'd really have to have a gap. So if you're finishing now, say you're finishing at end of April, you really wouldn't start your new season to make it run right until probably beginning of November. Yeah, and then you go November, then you go November, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. But yeah. but try, that try another find it, bro. I can't find it. But you but that would have a a, a a a problem effect throughout all the pyramid because everybody'd have to do it. You know, you can't because you obviously you've got feeders into into like the national league and things like that. So it, it's not just so straightforward, it's not easy. And there's no easy answer. There's no easy answer because the weather's the weather. We nobody can control the weather. And it's been the same all over the country, and it's been horrendous this time when you've got football league clubs getting getting postponed. I think the other day we're at Dundee and Rangers got postponed, yeah. right? So you're getting football league clubs now you're getting postponed. You know, it tells you there is a serious problem. It's not nothing to do with people's pictures and what they're spending on it or anything like that. It's to do with you know the climate where they're at. I mean, let's be honest. If you're down Cheshire. And you're down like South Liverpool, and uh, they don't they don't see the sort of kind of weather we get here up in, in no. East Lancashire and in the Pennine Hills. And if they wanted to take more notice of that, all you have to do is watch the Granada News because the Granada News is quite good because it gives you shows you the band and where it comes over. So it comes the band of rain that constantly float, flies over Burnley. Well, obviously, if it's flying over Burnley, it's flying over Bake Up. Well, I can remember last season we were, I think we were several metres of snow, under snow, but then we, we were playing away at Exton Villa and I didn't see one piece of snow. No, no, that's right. You know, so it, it, it is what it is. We, we, we can't alter the class and, and everybody else is the same. Baron Oldswick, you know, where they are, you know, they're, they're in the same situation. Corn, same situation. Nelson, same situation. No, no, you know, this took a, took, it took a, a, a battering up here and it is it is what it is. So my point being, there's no easy answer, right? Um, I don't agree we 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 starting any earlier than than what we're starting because because there's no there's there's, there's no recovery time for the pitchers. No. You know, I get to I get on this pitch. We get inquiries and we get charity events and we've got some lucrative charity events coming up. But the issue is right. I'll I'll say when it gets to end towards the end of May, this picture facility shut down. It has to be because it has to have all that remedial work done, and then it has to be left. And if you notice, it's very rare unless it's lucrative that that I'll book any pre-season games in for at home. But if you notice, all the bigger clubs when I say bigger clubs, all the Evo stick clubs and people they like want, that, they all want to play away. We all want to play away. Same principle, because they're saving the pitch. Yeah. Well, they were only. I think it was last season. You spent several thousand pound on uh, on the goal mouse, putting new seed down, and because we kicked off, well, you might as well have thrown that couple of thousand pound down the drain, Brent. Yeah, never took that right. That right, exactly. That just proves so the it, point. It, it, it? It, it, it needs it, it, to breathe the pitch. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is a difficult one, and I, and I just think that they've there's got to be a rethink somewhere because you're never going to change global warming is global warming. So I, I, I you know, um, 
well, what the answer is. It's easy for me to say start later, but I think that has a you know it, it has a knock on effect throughout the the pyramid. So that's not easy. But I certainly don't think that we should be starting any 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 earlier. Um, uh, quick one for you, Simon. Uh... Simon Kilshaw's with us tonight. He's uh, he, he tunes in every single week. How's Aiden getting on? So I think he's talking about Aiden. Aiden, who's he? Uh, how's the knee, Aiden? How's how's he doing? He's uh, he's waiting to go in. He's got to go to Wrightington Hospital, hospital, uh, waiting to go for an operation. So that's the update on Aiden, who's there. Yeah, uh, and uh, Stanley yeah. Lum is on Instagram. The million dollar question from Stanley. When's he playing for the first team? <laughs> Who's Stanley? Stanley's yeah. a great kid. Hey, hey listen, Stanley's yeah. a great kid. And you know a musician. what? A musician. I'm telling you, that lad will go a long way. Be He'll be a star, will Stanley? He'll be so, a star. I saw him last week. He was there at, at Athletic. He's supporting the Borough. Yeah, uh, he's a good lad. He's a good yeah. lad. Uh, very quickly, Brent. Uh, Runcorn Town tomorrow. And we've got the rearranged fixtures for Monday against Afton LR. And the final one should be, fingers crossed, Shelley FC at home on Wednesday night. They've been arranged, haven't they? The rearrangements. Uh, yeah, they're they're in in the in the, they've been rearranged. But what I want to know is this. Go on. Listen, you can't be too faced, right? I want to know the proper reason why you and Knights here are not going to church. What's it called? Ch Chernobyl or whatever it's called. The, the, Vir the Virador Community Stadium. Uh, Chernobyl, that's it. We're not going to Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Exactly. So just tell the truth. Why are you well, not going? Because well, I you see... I might have sort something out where I'm taking my daughter to some comic festival. No, 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 no. Come on, Steve, now. Come on, Steve. I'm up front with you, and I tell you straight, I'll, you've got to be... Pictures. I'll take pictures tomorrow. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, but you've just made them arrangements. Come on, let's have this right. Why, the, the listeners want to know, why is there going to be no comms tomorrow? Tell the truth. Why? Why will you not go and why will Nike see not go? I don't like, right? I don't like Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tell the truth. Have they got, you know, the squatters come running out of an house at you? <laughs> well, you don't even know. You don't even know Sam Porsche. You don't know where you're going. You think you're going onto some... Dodgy car park at the back of some uh, broken down boozer, like a scene from Shameless. Yeah, I know well, that's what I say. Just tell the truth. But, you know, you thought you were in like, somewhere else, and I told you to watch that building across. It definitely moves. It goes, it moves. It does move, doesn't it? For, uh... <laughs> it moves. You thought you were on high. <laughs> but anyway, have you, how's the squad looking for tomorrow? Are we, uh, same, I don't as, know. same as week. I, I, I haven't sent it out yet, but uh, yeah, it'll be, I, I'm sure it'll be uh, okay. They'll be chomping at the bit, will the boys? And uh, after that 1-1 one, one draw Ashton Athletic and uh, having to dig deep like we had to do. So uh, yeah, all, all good. Yeah. And I know that you and Deborah, midweek, you took a trip down to Wivenshaw Town, didn't you, Brent? Okay, yeah, we had to, yeah. we had to do, yeah, 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 yeah. We had a, a pre cup final meeting. So, one thing I'm going to say I, yeah. after last year, I'm glad that the Northwest Counties League have listened because I, you know, one thing what we said at that meeting, John Deal said, What did you think about, about the meeting? And, and, and even though I knew a lot of the things, because we, I just thought it, it was massively important to have because. Yeah. That could have cut out a lot of problems that were there last year at the Edward Case one at Congleton, yeah. um, and I think you know it, 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 I know I know I know we were at loggerheads at the time with the Northwest Counties and we had a bit of a pop at them and and one thing and another and uh, you know but one thing's a stonewall certainty even though they might not come out and hold their hands up and say yeah we got it wrong uh, they're listening and uh, that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask, mate. Have a good weekend. All right, pal. Yeah, you enjoy you. yourself. I'll just go and, uh, I'll, and be armoured up tomorrow. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll enjoy the comics. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>